Yeah, okay. Okay, we're on the air now. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the Board of County Commissioners of Pickin County work session on Tuesday, January 28th, 2020. And the first thing on our agenda this afternoon is a request for 10 month limited term full time employee for the clerk and recorder's office. Good afternoon. I'm Janice Boss, Caudill Picking County Clerk and Recorder, and I was just um, joking earlier that the only time I come to you is when I want somebody. <laughs> so here I am. Uh, it's me again. So Clerk and Recorder's Office is requesting a 10-month limited-term full-time position. Anything over nine months will need, and it, it requires benefits, needs your approval. So let me walk through um, what we're budgeted for and why we um, determined to go this route, to ask you for permission. In the 2020 budget, we did budget in the motor vehicle department for a 20 hour a week um, personnel um, uh, staff member to join us. In November, I spoke with my managers, the motor vehicle, as well as the um, recording uh, managers, and we decided to start cross-training front staff and see how that works before we bring in another staff on board. The other thing is, in the also last summer when we prepared the 2020 budget, we prepared to bring in a part-time em an employee, a temporary employee to help us for eight weeks during the primary, presidential, the summer primary, Colorado primary, and then again 12 weeks for the presidential um, election next fall. So we would bring in somebody in and out. Um, we sat down as managers and talked through it would be more beneficial for an individual as well as our department Sorry. to thank you. Should I start over? Nope, you're right. We got it. <laughs> I can reverse it. And start yeah. Over. It would be more beneficial and provide better continuity of business for our operations to bring in a full time um, limited term employee because they would learn during both presidentials and be better prepared, especially with the complex laws we work with during the presidential, which each each every four years or every other years, it becomes more hectic and um, more of a challenge. And then during that gap period, we could retain that individual and train them in the motor vehicle, and they would help us mostly during the summer, the spring and the summer when those gaps are, especially when staff take vacations, and, and especially when we have our peak season in motor vehicle is during the summer, the spring and the summer, uh, working into the fall. So that was the reasoning for um, our decision to move forward that way. So again, it would be better continuity of business. That individual will be more prepared to help us during the presidential election next fall, filling the gaps in motor vehicle, as well as another concern next fall is we have the census around the corner. So we will have challenges not only finding employees, but also judges as well. So I want to put that out there, hoping that all the judges that have helped us in the past will continue to help us during these elections. So asking not for money, asking for continuity of business and to retain somebody for 10 months and then pay them benefits. I feel it's the right thing to do to bring somebody on board as an, a pick and county employee. Um, hopefully we can find somebody who has skills knowledge and ability and wants to be within our organization and looks for something else within our organization. Okay, sure. Uh, thanks, Janet. I, I think that's great. Um, I'm a little confused, though, because I thought that uh, this has already been budgeted in, in, your, in, your, in your 2020 budget. So this is just an FYI? Or? Right. This, this is because I'm bringing in a FTE for 10 months, I need the board's approval. It is budgeted. Oh, it has it's, benefits it's, it's, it. It has benefits with it. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. And and it and the, and we have money for that. It would be the right. same cost if I brought in through a temporary agency. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks. Penny. Um, I am supportive of this. I think it makes great sense for many reasons. Um, and after that, I think the boards discussed this. I'm going to ask the chairman since this is a work session, if we can allow Janet uh, Janice a little bit of time to to another reminder about the upcoming primary. A little public service announcement, if it's okay well, with you. Let's do that as soon as we finish I said, that's after what I said. the discussion. I said of this. after we're done with this discussion, yeah. if you would allot her some time. For sure. I think we have plenty of time. Um, do you have a question? No, I'll just comment. Um, Janice, of course, I'm supportive. I think your um, 
gracefully downplaying the just magnitude of work facing your department this year and you know we're here I think to support you through that and of course having someone who's trained throughout all of the elections will be a real asset when you have 98 percent turnout come <laughs> November 3rd let's hope so and and again yeah. it is the election law is extremely complex and to have somebody on board that is trained and prepared for us is a huge asset for us so thank you um, just want you have enough time to get them trained up to speed and everything that they'll be helping you do sure we have an um, election in March so that's their first round we have another one in June that's their second round and then preparation so they'll be a, a veteran by the time we get to the let's national hope so. presidential election let's hope right. so. that's the plan <clears throat> yeah I, I support this thank you so Janice the, the way that you have basically two part-time temporary positions that have been budgeted so you're are you considering this is rolling those two both into one person thanks or for are you still gonna seek a second person to help out on the motor yeah. vehicles I have enough money with those two part times to budget a full time so Connie's working with me is when they line items when they work with elections I'll pull it out of that budget and when they work with motor vehicle I'll pull it out of there so we'll balance that okay. but I, I but I do have the money budgeted and it is enough to cover for that 10 months so I better not be coming back for more money right? <laughs> okay. we're gonna watch you coming through that door yeah. mm -hmm. and it seems like it totally makes sense given the employment market here if you can get one good person yeah. for 10 months uh, I think it'd be a lot easier to get fill that position than two part-time positions without benefits it's easier it's um, strength in continuity of business um, and, I, and again I just think it's the right thing to do for Pickens County to fold somebody in the county provide them benefits and and um, hopefully they're an asset to the community and to us okay yeah I'm, I'm very supportive of it too this one last question on the available pool of people do you have candidates in mind is there a, enough of a you've got a choice locally what we need to f we we do have somebody in mind Elizabeth's been working on it and um, it, for the last um, couple of weeks yeah the last month so because of the timing with meetings etc and getting the paperwork through this is where we are today I was just thinking about every time we talk about hiring a new position we're also looking at a housing hole mm -hmm. that needs to be filled mm -hmm. um, so hopefully hopefully that won't be too much of an impediment you can get them up get them in and going quickly I'm working through that yeah. thanks for bringing that up okay, okay. Thanks. now now do you want to give us an update on the March okay. third so it's a go um, so what I want to um, announce to you is um, for the first time since 20 years we we meaning Colorado will have its first prime presidential primary since 20 years ballots will drop in the mail on February 10th we will have one week of early voting and March 3rd is um, the president the, the presidential primary again unaffiliated Democrats will receive their Democrat ballot Republicans the Republican and unaffiliated will receive if they haven't picked a preference will receive two ballots in the mail both the Democrat and the Republican and will return one okay when they both come at the same time if they both come in the same time and they're voted neither one counts but I mean if they, the ballots will come in the same Correct. envelope so you, you, can, you don't get a pink one and then a blue one you get both, both of them the and you could pick right. one discard the other yep. you'll get a ballot packet with both ballots in it if you're unaffiliated okay, okay. I will be going out to actually I'm reaching out today I will be going out before city of Aspen basalt and snowmass again to announce and um, we'll be working with the media to put ads in the paper educating the community thank you okay well thank you I'll be back on the 12th just to give you more information so Perfect. so so think of some questions so so Janice on the on the Democratic ballot there will be a whole slew of names yeah. on there yeah on few if any of them are going to come campaigning to Colorado because they're this is a new like super election day for us and brand new this year so um, it's going to be difficult I think for voters to um, try to make up their mind out of uh, such a huge selection super Tuesday I think there's 17 candidates and I think four of them are 
Republicans and the remainder are Democrats. So I'll bring a sample ballot when I come next year. And there are names on there that are people who are no longer running for president, do you think? They have not processed that through the Secretary of State, so how we view it is they are still running, okay, until they have followed through accordingly with the Colorado Secretary Mm. of State's office and filed the proper paperwork. Okay. All right. So only to further confuse the voting. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so there's there's how we look at it uh, in operations, and there's the information. How the rest of the world looks at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right. Okay, all right, thank you. See you on the 12th. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, thank you. Appreciate yeah. your help. Okay. Uh, let's see. Our person to interview, actually, we're ahead of schedule right now, so let's jump ahead to review of future agendas. couple of items here um, just again a reminder of the board retreat tomorrow at the <laughs> door hosier um, we're in the Kaufman room and uh, I believe now if you haven't seen them uh, the notebooks are on your desks and uh, we want them thoroughly read by tomorrow morning thoroughly at yes the report will start after you uh, give your legacy reports so <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, Charlotte's got in here that she's working on scheduling the clear core presentation with Mona and Alice Uh, So she's still working on that uh, for you. And then also on uh, with Garfield County on scheduling a joint meeting, uh, looking at the end of February or beginning of March. Okay, so those are the notes I have on the agenda. And I don't have anything. I went through it, and um, the issues that I had from last week have been taken off, cleaned up on the future agenda. So as of right now... um, and I'll talk to, with Charlotte about trying to go to that Garfield County because I'm going to be out for that period of time, not quite at the very end of the month, Okay. but pretty close. Okay, that'd be her. good. Yeah, just let her know. And <clears throat> yeah. And I would just oh. note, um, I think I had brought up here and got the board's support to request sometime in the future um, a work session to discuss water issues okay. and our update to the basin implementation plan and the Roaring Fork Watershed Management Plan and the Crystal River Restoration Plan. Um, so I just want to keep okay. that moving forward. We will circle back on that for you. I've, I've been talking to April Long about coming Great. in presenting on the Roapa side of it and the Roaring Fork Plan too. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We'll do that. Mm-hmm. That would be that would be great if we you know we could have a report on the Rudai Water and Power Authority situation at the same same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's April. Okay. You know, April could probably cover like most of those things all on her own. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but she may want Close. some. She may bring support. the hydro power guys along. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't have anything. Um, George, you have anything? Okay, um, I guess we could go to the ambulance building closeout, contract closeout. Change hats, change seats. Change hats, seats, that's right. (laughs) Okay, let's see here. We'll pull this up. Okay, um, Commissioners Rich, Inglehart Deputy County Manager. Um, I believe the last time I sat in front of you, we were just finishing out, kind of closing things and letting you know that we had a ribbon cutting coming up. So um, since that time, it it takes a while for us to do our lien waivers to then finish out our financial side of it. And so I'm here today to report to you what those final numbers look like and um, bring you some good news. But first off, just a picture, this nice, warm looking picture. that's beautiful. I, yeah, Pat's on on vacation, or else I'm, I would have one of the ribbon cutting, but I can't find them, so uh, <laughs> so I apologize for that. I should have gotten that before she had left. But uh, just going through this and the key dates, as you'll recall, when I would sit in front of the board and we would talk about milestones, uh, we had a list of dates that uh, that were um, that we were kind of knocking off as we went. So I'm just bringing these back just to show you that uh, we really did hit. Uh, each of these there may have been a couple that we were delayed maybe a week or so on um, like the mechanical startup and I think the future or the furniture installation we didn't quite hit those on time but um, building occupancy we did a soft opening Uh, the staff moved in on time and then we did the ribbon cutting 
on 9-9 of 2019. So here's what I wanted to show you. Um, the construction cost, so what you've got on the left side are just the, the particular items and then the expenditures associated with those. So at the top um, is the overall construction uh, minus any of these soft costs, furniture, or the owner contingency. So uh, this construction also included uh, some of the work that we had to do on the utilities for Holy Cross. So that's rolled into that as well. So construction costs for about 7.27. Million dollars, and in soft costs, uh, the total of those four that are underneath that was nine hundred forty-five thousand. And so we had the architectural fees uh, that came in at four hundred fifty-eight, the fees and permitting, which uh, was the work with the city um, and the utility providers that we had to get the permitting from, uh, was three hundred ninety-two thousand. Uh, engineering consulting about seventy-three thousand, then nineteen for miscellaneous. So that made up. Uh, 945,000. I ran the uh, percentage costs on construction for those and they're actually right in line um, with what you would anticipate paying for architectural fees and, and permitting. So, But whenever, when we talk projects, um, when people talk just simply construction, um, you've always got to keep in mind there are those soft costs and uh, they're substantial uh, in projects like these. So I, I break those out separately so that you can see those. Um, the uh, furniture, fixtures, and equipment uh, came in at 154000 which is really a, a good price. That included uh, the weight equipment that was part of the, the workout room itself and uh, some of the IT costs associated with that uh, uh, meeting room that they have there. And then I showed the owner contingency off to the side. Um, whenever we make decisions as we're going along, uh, those funds are, are rolled into what the construction is because FCI will come in or the contract will come in with a change order and either they'll have that in their contingency or the county would have some contingency funds available. So we've set, afide, set aside 370000 And you see the 10000 off to the side there. Uh, I'm pulling that out of these numbers because there are still, um, we're going to put a surface on the outside steps that lead up to that Nordic Trail. We were working with the city on trying to get the graded type of um, steps that you see normally, like at SkiCo uses a lot of those. The type of openings just didn't meet code. So we ended up having to go with a different type. So now we're putting a surface, kind of a non-slick surface on those because this, this fall, whenever it rained a little bit, uh, those are awful slick. So we're going to go ahead and put a uh, kind of a graded surface on top of it, and that meets code. So uh, that's yet to be done. I wanted to close this out, and then we'll just do it on time and material. So that 10000 is set aside. And uh, so the, the bottom line is that we had total revenues of $8.6 million. Uh, the project came in at eight point three, and we were able to turn back. Uh, we're going to, Connie and I decided we'll just round it to 215000 uh, back into the fund. That's yeah, right. that's going to go back into the fund balance here. So uh, that's really good news. I, I appreciate. In fact, Gabe, uh, me thing I asked if he could attend today. He's out of town at a conference, but uh, the team we put together and with Gabe's help, uh, we were able to really kind of keep the project within within the boundaries that we had set um, or that you had all had set for us uh, to bring this in under budget. And so. Uh, it's always nice to come back and show you those those overall savings. And then I highlighted at the bottom there uh, some of the revenue sources. Um, we did tap into that 370 to do the solar addition on the roof. As you recall, we came in mid-year and said, okay, we're, we're out of the ground. Things are looking good. Why don't we go ahead and, and try that? And you as a board said, yes, we'd like to move forward on that. So uh, we utilize that owner contingency to do that work. Um, but uh, in essence, it was, uh, it was only maybe a $13,000 expense because the cost of solar was about 53000 But uh, thanks to uh, George, again, and your work with CORE, uh, asking us to go after those dollars, uh, Holy Cross and Black Hills with those rebates, um, we installed that at a very uh, reasonable price. That's great. So, How's that performing? Do we, have you been it was doing great until the heavy snows. And, right. uh, we, uh, you know, we had a discussion the other day whether we get up and clean those off yet, and uh, I've asked them not to do that yet. It's just pretty dangerous up there. So, um, but I can tell you, whenever it was operating, we were doing really well. Right. Uh, it was it was covering the costs. In fact, we were generating. I had the same dilemma with mine on my roof, and I actually bought a rake to try and, and I decided that rake could actually damage them. So yeah. I decided to be very careful <laughs> with that. You know, yeah. don't want to take a chance. I'm going to damage the solar panels. Yeah. So, uh, 
Yeah, I like the idea that you had at one time of maybe something on the side that you could put heat. Right, I heat still want to do that somehow, you know, <laughs> and figure that out. So that'd yeah. be nice. A hot nice air, air. So yeah, defeats yeah. the purpose of. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. There are <clears throat> times on my roof or along the driveway or anywhere where we want to melt snow quickly, and on the ranch, I would get this powdered manure that was like really old manure that was like really fine dust and I would just sp- spread that on the snow and it, it just makes it melt really the quickly. Heat. Oh, it drives heat. I yeah. think the so city maybe, would love that yeah, spreading manure that. over the city property. I mean that could that could actually become kind of a you know somebody's enterprise to, to develop some technique so you don't have to get up there you can yeah. do it from the ground and and have something that would like spread some dust on solar collectors or on a yeah. north facing roof to make it melt faster and r- remove the yeah, yeah we're not the unique. ice dams or you bet. Um, yeah we're not unique in this i mean a lot of solar yeah. panels do get covered up and it and as you all know that's a relatively flat roof uh, it doesn't have that pitch that it's going to go off there quick so mm-hmm. maybe matt can consult us on uh, on a a solar panel heating system. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate the getting up on a roof in the winter. Yeah, yeah, it's not not what you like to do. So, yeah. anyways, that uh, concludes that. I just wanted to bring that to your attention, and let you know that uh, we've now wrapped it up. And yay! And so I went out so. and visited and took right. some cookies the other day for the for the for the staff members that couldn't attend the ribbon cutting because they were heading two ambulances full heading to Denver that day. So. I took out cookies to those staff members that didn't get to for the party. Great. I don't know who Thank ate you. them. I'm not sure they well, the right people got them. I think they were probably eaten before that chip came <laughs> on. But I probably, yes. So, Rich, yes. Uh, a finance question that goes uh-huh. back to the to the fund balance of our Picking County general fund balance. No, that'll actually go to the that? ambulance the oh, yeah. ambulance district. The ambulance uh-huh. fund balance, mm-hmm. and then which you all sit on the board for, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just wanted to see whose fund balance, yep. and I was, I couldn't remember quite how we did all the financing of it. Right. Yeah, no, it's a good question. Again, the, the bond proceeds came through a vote uh, through the ambulance district, so that's where those uh, revenues were generated. Mm-hmm. So, okay, Great. unless you have any other questions, I'll... Let's work on and... that, that in the snow melt system. I, I yeah. still want to yeah. do that. <laughs> that on your list. Okay. Thank you. That'll Thanks, be your Rich. next nice task. Job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Success. Okay. Um, next up, and we have our our citizen interview, and so Matt Schmigelski is here for a, a Healthy Rivers and Streams Board interview. And how did Great. you know how to pronounce his yeah, name? Yeah, that was impressive. I am impressed. <laughs> Schmigelski. Well, hello. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes. Thanks for having oh, afternoon. me. Afternoon. It is Welcome. afternoon. Or afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad. I guess I'm on time. Yeah, you're good. Mm-hmm. Right on time. Okay. We, so we're a little ahead. So Matt, we really appreciate uh, any time a, a citizen applies to be mm-hmm. one on one of our boards. Uh, we really rely a, a lot on the, the advice we get from all the various boards. So we consider them to be important positions, and we appreciate the fact that. You have uh, applied applied for this position. Oh, thanks. So, Dad. could you tell us some something about your background and um, why you think you're qualified to be on the Healthy Rivers and Streams Board? Yeah. So, um, I've lived in the valley for about 18 years or so, um, and been involved in kind of the water scene uh, for a lot of those years, to, uh, working with. Um, Special District Consulting initially, and so we're running water systems at it, Buttermilk and Highlands and different ones. Um, so kind of got introduced to to the water world from the municipal side, distribution side, and then uh, and then a little bit of water resource, um, you know, sort of water rights and those sorts of things as well. Uh, and then have been in the the con- consulting sustainability space for a number of years through my work at Clear. Um, and then I'm a homeowner up the crystals. So, uh, the crystals, uh, we, and I think when I applied online, I put a little note in there, but, um, we, we have a small subdivision of about 10 homes and, and so our well went dry last, uh, spring of 18, so the really, really dry year. So there was, um, you know, definitely made, became very apparent to us that there's 
I think the climate impacts that we're going to be experiencing going forward and, and today even, I think the results of 18 in a big way, um, there's, you know, water scarcity is going to become an issue. So that kind of, I think, is the biggest reason that I, you know, would would like to to, to learn a lot more through the, the Healthy Rivers and Streams um, board and, and listen and, you know, uh, understand a lot more about what's happening at the county level and the water space um, and and yeah work on at clear hasn't been a lot of water but um, some dabbling in, uh, in municipal water systems and those sorts of things so um, that's kind of my background and uh, just out of curiosity how do you still have a problem with your mm. well did you were you able we to had supplement to, it in some fashion yeah we had to drill a whole new well yeah so it, it had been um, it was originally drilled in 1970 or adjudicated in 1976 um, and had really had no problems in those 50 years. And so, um, yeah, to our, it essentially went dry. The, you guys remember 18 when there was literally zero snowfall, and then it, in April it, became, it went to 70 degrees, and so there was really no moisture to recharge anything. And so, um, so yeah, we, I think... Uh, my partner got the last shower that one morning and the well went dry, so we had to literally yeah, uh, figure out in, in really short order what our options were. So we had to go you know, through the process of going to the, to the water um, commissioner and, and just go through the permitting uh, in a well fast track, me. exactly, mm -hmm. to replace that one, and, and then had to uh, drill one. So we were without water for about a, a week or 10 days. So it became... Pretty, uh, pretty dry out. Pretty there. apparent too how how much we rely on uh, on water. I mean, on a daily basis, just having to to essentially haul water just to to live day to day is um, is pretty pretty dramatic if you don't ever experience that. Um, yeah, and then now there's um, a uh, we are out of priority call, out of priority diversion call that is in place on on the crystal or was um, during that in the August uh, time frame, 30 day period, I think in late August of 18. And so, um, so there's a group in the crystal that you guys maybe you're familiar with that is trying to figure out how to address that at this point, you know, um, and really is no go to solution. I think there's some um, discussions with the, I think it's the West Divine Conservancy District, I think is who's, um, who has that jurisdiction and um and so trying to figure out augmentation water which there doesn't really much much doesn't exist in the crystal at this point so how to how to address that that out of prior, priority diversion call so so we've been involved in a bit of that discussion with the town of marble and and some others that have been meeting over the past yeah, six just months tap onto that real quick just a quick question thanks for applying yeah. um so as you know, years ago, uh, we entered a, a settlement with the West Divide and, and the River District in mm -hmm. terms of uh, uh, distinguishing the, the conditional rights for a dam up Placita mm -hmm. as well as the Osgood Dam. So uh, given, given sort of the uh, climate crisis mm -hmm. and, and some of the issues in terms of uh, the calls for along the Cristo, what are your thoughts about a dam and where if so, where would you like to see it? Oh, oh gosh, no, um, no, I don't think. I mean, the crystal in and of itself is, is you know, I mean, if you're familiar with the topography up there, it's, and and I think the the soil types and, and all those sorts of things lend itself to being really, really challenging. But um, by by no means, I think we're talking about really, you know, in very small amounts of water. Like our our diver or our uh, our well produces somewhere in the order of a half acre foot probably a quarter of an acre foot maybe um so probably the amount of water that jessup diverts in five minutes or 30 seconds even during peak season so um so i just think i think more than anything it needs to be discussion around how to um you know look at with the perspective of the amount of water that we're talking about and um and obviously it's it's all about time and place um where it's where it's diverted to make up that that uh that deficit the the diversion call that's that's been made is is fairly low down. It's um, I forget the name of the the ditch, but it's just out of Carbondale. It's that first 
meadow across from Bill Fails' um, property. Um, so it's yeah somewhere in that mid mid reach of, of the crystal that there needs to be some water made up to to make his his water right whole. Uh, I don't by any means think that um, that. And I, I don't have any foregone conclusions at all. I've, I've just really been participating from a homeowner's perspective to, to understand what, what's there. And, and really more than anything has been to, to, um, to share that, you know, our, the amount of water that we consume is, is really, really minimal. So it's kind of interesting in the water right spectrum that there's, it, that doesn't seem to be um, front and center, you know, in terms of, how to address it. It's really kind of a blanket approach to, to address the, the deficit. And it's like, maybe there's a different solution. So I think that would be my perspective is like, how do we maybe get a little creative? There's a lot of leasing that's going on. I think the town of Carbondale would have been under that, um, that call as well with Nettle Creek. They were out of priority, but they were able to, to negotiate um, in really short order within 30 or 60 days, I think. Um, a, an agreement with um, uh, one of the ditch rights holders to make up their their sort of exchange essentially. So um, we just, as a disparate group of homeowners with very li you know varying degrees of understanding, water rights are incredibly co complex in and of themselves. So most folks don't you know it's hard to step into that space and and be able to to understand it in short order. So I think. Um, if we, if there was enough understanding to or agreement in place to be able to to operate with that similar um, similar sort of structure, I think that would be the, the best approach, in my opinion, just to be able to to use existing partnerships and and water that's already there. That and not um, looking at a dam or reservoir. Right, it'd be in exchange essentially. Oh, so, okay. Do you think that because of your efforts here that that might create any future conflicts of interest with efforts of the Healthy Rivers and Streams Board? We're very careful yeah. with that, with appointments. So. Right. Um, yeah, no, that's a, it's a good question. You know, I think, um, you know, if there's obviously a, a grant that was being requested yeah. for that specific project, I would accuse myself from that we would specific probably ask you to yeah yeah exactly so um, but beyond that you know I'm I uh, obviously there's my background and, and some municipal work but like um, I'm definitely open to you know really learning about what's what's uh, what's happening a lot of the recreation activities and basalt with um, you know, recreational in stream diversion opportunities um, and just find trying to you know see and, and apply some of this perspective of, of climate um, to, you know, where opportunities might exist to, to, um, to, to, to look at ways to, to try and get ahead of the curve. Because I think we're, you know, that was, for me, eye-opening to see it really from a personal level to see. Your backyard. Yeah, literally to my house to, to not have water. So, um, so I'd, you know, more than anything would be, you know, just... Uh, that perspective, I think, would be where I'd be coming from, and um, and being open to to learning about um, all the activities that are going on. There. Thank you. Thanks for applying. Yeah, Kelly. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah, Thanks likewise. for coming all the way up here today. Mm -hmm. um, what are your What are your thoughts? And I'm sure you've been part of the conversation about the movement for a wild and scenic designation mm. of the crystal. Yeah, um, I am fairly new to the crystal. Yeah, you know, I think I bought my property maybe. Four Four years ago or so, um, so I, ha I looked through some of the some of the work that's been done over the years um, through different organizations in the crystal. And honestly, I don't know all the the nitty gritty and the finite details of of those. Um, I love the crystal, of course. I'm a I'm a boater as well, so you know, recreation us recreational user of of our uh, our local rivers. Mm -hmm. So definitely, it's I guess another big aspect of. You know, what I would want to um, understand better and, and be able to advocate for. Okay. And then um, I just have a couple of general questions. Um, 
Do you have a grant review experience in either professional or personal life? Um, yeah, so a lot of the work that I did at CLEAR was around, um, is grant driven. So primarily through um, through a state contract, uh, the State Energy Office. Um, so developing and writing went and successfully being awarded that grant um, a few times and um, a handful of others. We, I primarily worked on electric vehicle uh, opportunities. Um, so you'd be on the other side of it where you'd be reviewing. Yeah, right. And yeah, so it'd be. Scoring proposals. Yeah. Yeah, so I definitely have been on the okay. on the application side more than sure. that. Sure. Okay. Um, and I have worked in HOA management and, and those sorts of things, so I definitely have interacted. Special district management, so I would be the, you know, essentially the special, special district manager to set budgets and no levies for, like, Holland Hills was was one that I okay. was actively managing back in a, a previous uh, role. So that's when you were working at Beach Resources? Yes, exactly, yep. We're dealing with that stuff? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and I've, I've stepped away from clear, and, and I'm starting my own um, sort of sustainability and, and carbon reduction consulting firm. So um, that's part of having the, uh, the, the freedom and, and opportunity to, to be able to devote some time to to um, this sort of activity. So, so Kelly, I'm excited. you said you had a couple questions. Do you have any any other? Um, no, I think okay. that's Okay, okay, great. Yeah. I was just thinking, uh, I don't know how much you've followed the Healthy Rivers and various activities. Certainly mm -hmm. the basalt whitewater park's been in the papers. Yep. And that, that project is going. There are other projects up the crystal, of course. Mm -hmm. um, at one point, we're all discussing the, the turbidity of the water coming out of Coal Basin, mm -hmm. you know, how would we try to mitigate that? Mm. We could reduce that. I think that's the single point source of pollution in the crystal that's right. the single largest, as I believe. And at one point we talked about trying to actually create settling ponds or something. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of interesting stuff going on both in your neighborhood and mm -hmm. elsewhere. I, I guess you'd be filling, you know, it's a District 5 seat, right? Or is that the, the Roaring Fork no. watershed? There's two seats. Um, there are two, two seats openings. Are open, right? Yeah. Ken Newbecker's seat. Uh, he's, it, he's in Ken Newbecker's, not in um, Kate Hudson, who's reapplying. Right, right. Yeah. And I guess that's a, a doesn't. It just, it's a watershed wide. If we put you in that, okay. Looking at the vacant positions, um, I think your your background <coughs> seems to probably be some good crossover from what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, any other any other parallels you could you could right think great. about hit on. Um, yeah, no, I think, you know, it's uh, interesting times. I think I would have hit on, you know, in terms of just generally where, where activities at. You know, the, the Coal Basin um, is an interesting project or, or area just with, you know, change in ownership, I think, over the last number of years. I think there, there has been um, some, the, some connection there with, with uh the group that is involved um, right. with that ownership. So there might be, you know, an, some time or, or a new path forward or, or, or a new discussion to maybe evaluate those sorts of things. I've, I've found that in, in my work, you know, that a lot of times stuff will hit roadblocks and it, you know, over time, you know, new perspective, new ownership, new things can, can change that dynamic in a big way. So maybe there's, you know, opportunity to to look at some of these projects that maybe had. Um, regarding regarding being on a board, I'm, I'm assuming I, I have to go back and look, but mm -hmm. you, just the, the board dynamics. Mm -hmm. you know, often, like our board is, you know, five individuals who can make a decision only if we're all working right. together in a public forum, and yeah. you know, so you get that sort of a dynamic. And mm -hmm. are you familiar with with how that works? Just you know, the biggest concern we all have is avoiding ex parte communication mm. or. Or any things that would you know that mm -hmm. wouldn't be violate a sunshine law or something okay. like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've Garfield Clean Energy is a group that uh, that Clear managed, so it's, it's definitely you know active and um, and mainly um, you know just sharing updates on on my work in, in the transportation space and those sorts of things. So um, interacting with with uh, you know commission there's. Garfield County commissioners that were part of that um, group, as well as you know all the participating entities. So um, definitely have been on the 
the the front side i haven't necessarily had, had as much 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 exposure on the back side but that's where i really would like to to yeah step into that role and, and start to and learn about um and, and be active in in that process and uh and then more than anything you know learn a lot about what's uh what's happening uh countywide and get that perspective as well great great thank you yeah ellie yeah, so, you know, you don't have to live in Colorado long to know that um, water is a sensitive topic. And, you know, I think with the Healthy Rivers Board is, um, you know, the board and the fund are created through voter support. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, our policies at a, at a county level um, sometimes can conflict with the River District and, mm. you know, conservancies and... Um, you know, West Divide and like George kind of alluded to. So I guess I just want to check in about your ability when you have your Healthy Rivers hat on, mm -hmm. you know, to be reflective of the Picking County mm -hmm. um, view and, and that community's interest mm. um, when you're, you know, active on the board. Right, right. No, that's, uh, that's a good point. Of course, yeah, I would, um, yeah, be yeah, open to uh, or you know, have that perspective to, to, uh, to, to take from that seat in that table. Um, and yeah, I haven't necessarily been the, I think the most, uh, active I've been with regards to, um, you know, understanding West Divide as, as an entity, I haven't really, uh, had much, much exposure to them beyond this, the crystal, um, uh, the, the issue that we are facing as a, a in our home and our subdivision. Sure. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. No, and I mean, you have great resources. I will just say that yeah. that's not necessarily left to the Healthy Rivers Board on an individual level mm. to feel out. You know, I mean, they work very closely with our attorney's office and mm -hmm. reflect this board's position on water right. policy and things like that. So you're not floundering right, out there. Right. But I do just want to sort of call that sensitivity yeah. to your attention. In over your head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That proposed uh, water. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that, does that answer your? Okay. Sure. Yeah. 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 Sure. And time-wise, obviously, you've realized in yeah. your own personal life you'll have time. Um, meetings are once a month. Once a month, and right now we have the application process is closing the twenty seventh, which was yesterday, right? Was that? Okay. No. I think we extended it a week. And um, so we still have one more person to okay. interview. So then it takes us a little bit of time, and we uh, do our appointments by formal resolution during one of our regular meetings. So okay. I guess it's – so don't be – it might take us a little bit. Okay. What I'm yeah, it would no. be at least a couple weeks before we have Absolutely. you know, make a decision of either – actually, there's three people applying for two positions in effect, one of them being an incumbent. Okay. Um, and then you could most – most likely you would be filling the um, Roaring Fork watershed, which could be anybody from Eagle or... Well, no, it could be I, the I District 5. I wouldn't say five. that, Steve. Well, or you could be filling a District 5 position, which is the, the okay. Down Valley area, which would be the same as George's uh, Commissioner District. Okay. So that's because you're living in the Crystal okay. River. So, okay. Yeah. Um, We'll let you know. Yeah. Thank you thanks, for thanks. applying. Yeah, nice nice to meet you. Appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah. We appreciate you stepping up. Yeah. yeah, thanks. We appreciate right. it. Yeah. It's a great board, good group of people. Yeah, I know. I guess you had been on it. So, yeah, it would be interesting to, to get your perspective on sure. activity. So, enjoy Thank it. Thanks Thank you. for the time. Well, we are moving along here today, board. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly's going to get to that FaceTiming of that wedding with her daughter's mm -hmm. little flower girl. <laughs> True. Okay, um, we have done everything but board open discussion. Rich, do you have anything? I do. I've got actually some pictures I can show you of the airport. Just a quick update there. Uh, okay. For that, I, I believe uh, Carrie sent out an email to you all about uh, access and to be able to get uh, Timesheets. <laughs> and I think it and confused like, a lot of people. Um, I'm coming to you. I referred everybody to you. I know. I know. <laughs> and you can say I went right to Carrie. So um, what we can do is with our new system, I don't think we've had the opportunity to sit down and run you through that. 
maybe there we should take a little time and either do it individually or whatever and show you the new um, access and you can go in and access your time uh, car your paychecks on there and just take a look at those because you don't get those now printed so um, if you'd like let me know and we can kind of run you through that it's I'll make pretty an appointment. Slick. All right. Okay. Great. Thanks. Uh, that's all I had, other than some photos. You want me to? Yeah. Go ahead yeah. And why jump don't you up? put those up first? Okay. I, I've sure. got a couple of things to okay. for us to discuss. George, by the way, that notebook—that's paper in there, that three-ring binder. <laughs> I don't think you can pull it up online, can you? <laughs> no, but I do recycle this every year back to I Charlotte. I do too. I do too. <laughs> so I'm surprised. Uh, maybe uh, it's just a new cover, right? Yeah, those are all recycled three ring binders. All right. Um, John had asked that I um, show this with you. We had a meeting this morning and we were asking how the improvements were going and where things were at. So, this is a little bit older photo. Is, is, if you've been out the airport, you could probably tell by now. But uh, so, this is uh, the interior work that was done uh, in the corned off area is where the old gift shop used to be. So those are walls that went across there, oh, and you I couldn't see. you couldn't yeah, see you back through, through the there. Restaurant. I'm like, yeah, where am I? Yeah, isn't that interesting? Um, and it just really opens up um, that whole area, and uh, so now you can see clear back into where the the food is at, and uh, so that's a that's a shot of that. Um, this is looking now towards uh, where the administrative offices were, and before that was a solid wall that went went all the way across. We were going to take out that entire wall where the fire extinguisher is at, but uh, it was a load bearing and it had yeah. uh, quite a few <laughs> utilities within it. So we went ahead and just opened up a door that walked back into that. And then that's what it looks like now. So it provided a lot of additional seating back in there. Uh, the window on the far back corner, that's where John Kinney's office used to be. Uh, so you can, you can tell it just uh, it really uh, opened up uh, that whole section. Is it at it max or... Because of fire code, or can we put in another row of chairs if we needed to? We could probably do another row of chairs in there. Um, as you can see, it's, it's like you, you do space have, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we had to, we could we could probably do a single set. I'm not sure we could do a double. Um, and looking, uh, whenever you get back the other way and look across, I'm not sure down at that far end if we can make that work or not. But if we got into a jam, I think we could do something there, Patty. At least some more. Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, this is outside now where the loading or the, uh, for the baggage claim or not baggage claim, but the baggage area after it's screened, um, the one off to the far right side is the one that's already enclosed and under, uh, is already utilized. And this is the addition. And again, the airlines are paying for this, uh, portion of this work. And, uh, we just bid and I think Mike Herman told us that the conveyor belt that's going to be used here came in uh, under budget. So uh, that was that was good news because um, this is quite a costly undertaking there. Up on the right uh, top, I'm sorry, top left hand corner is the pad that was poured uh, for the structure that you see in the other photo, and this is that extra baggage area, uh, which is a tent, and this is standing inside now and looking out. So the tent's been put in place and uh, it'll be ready to go now. Um, so that any of these. These days we had like yesterday that it's uh, kind of, you know, the weather has delays. So this is that overflow area for that baggage. Is it going to be heated? No. Um, my understanding it's not or it wasn't. Now I uh, might mention something about putting electrical, maybe those, uh, um, oh, their electric radiant heat is all. But uh, the thought was that the bags are coming off of planes that are, They've been cold anyway. They've been cold, so it isn't as if we need to keep them warm. So I don't think there was a, you know. If we, if we hear from the customers that there's an issue, then I think we can address it. But we could. And like I said. not use electric heaters out there. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I, like I said, it, if it is, we can, we can certainly adjust for that. And again, these are kind of temporary improvements, but we've been you know, trying to maintain the board's direction of let's don't put a lot of investment out there, not knowing what, where the future is going to go. So we've tried to hold those back. And then, speaking of which, this is the new administrative offices. Um, so half of it. At least a half of it, yes. <laughs> uh, the other half is, uh, is on site as well, but they're uh, starting to put those into place. So this is where um, we will be moving staff that's currently in the AOC back over into this uh, building. And then uh, we did have a one-year contract for the financial services that are taking place at the OAC, or I mean at the uh, uh, North 40. We've rented space over there. So 
they'll move back into this location. Question is, did we purchase this modular? Uh, yes. Yeah. So we can recycle it to Phillips trailer cart when we're done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, who knows? Um, <laughs> at least we own it, so we've got some options yeah. for sure. Maybe it's uh, employee housing someday for you never know. people who knows. And then I just wanted to bring this to your attention, too. Apparently, um, the airport has had some calls about uh, being upset about being able to park ADA-wise closer to the building. And uh, so this is something that they've come up with now that is a new sign that identifies that location to where you can um, load and unload and it's AD so or ADA so it's specified so it's usually open now but again it makes it clear that it's a transfer zone you, you still can't just you can't park your car there if you're an employee and leave. exactly yeah yeah yes that as well um, so that that's an improvement that has also just uh, been recently made thank you for that you are welcome so that's that's hmm. that I'll have to go about, out and yeah. look um, the other day I was at the airport just watching, and there was a, a car sitting out there with nobody in it. And I need to go back and see if maybe they were in the ADA one and maybe the person had wheeled somebody Oops, in somebody perhaps. In. Yeah, but I'll yeah. have to go back out and yeah. see where. And right away a, a woman came out and got in and drove away, but yeah. she did leave it. She did leave mm -hmm. the car sitting there without anybody there. and. I, I stood there. I was just curious. Well, what's going to happen? How long yeah. would it take yeah. um, airport staff to recognize that? To come out and start, you know, preparing to tow the car away or whatever. Well, and, you know, there's going to be instances like that. I, I would hope that, uh, that I we recognize one. that. And if somebody's wheeling somebody in, uh, that they have the time to do that, but drop them and then come back out. So, uh -huh. anyways. George. How's the, uh, the cell uh, parking area working out? From what I hear, it's working out well. Yeah, um, yeah. it has taken the pressure off the short-term parking, and uh, uh, that's a great idea. So I think it's yeah, it was a, it was a nice improvement. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. But you have to have a cell phone with you, and you can't just leave your car there. Yep. So people need yep. to know. Yeah, yeah. And you know, moving the kiosk or the uh, the building for the um, uh, shared ride has really helped as well. I don't think we see as many people coming through on that shortcut. Uh, as right, we used to have. Right, I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah. it's not, not utilized as a slip lane. Yes, yeah. No, and, ha yeah, yeah really and have we seen any, well, you won't know this, Austin, Dave, um, about any increased traffic issues at the rodeo lot. No, not the rodeo lot, the Brush Creek Park and Ride. <laughs> Never remembered that new name. For increased traffic coming out in the morning hours that might be causing congestion at that signal using the new tiny house that they put in, George. At the park and ride. That's a good use for a tiny house. I know you yeah. <laughs> Tiny space. Nobody uh, sits down. Nobody lies down. You know, I, I think there were some issues. I guess it's cold, issues. though. They figured out the heat. There were some issues early on, early on with the bus circulation, and I think they got that straightened out to where people weren't allowing for buses to come in, so they would just park and wait for the light, and so then the buses would back up. And so I think they've gotten that straightened out. But other than that, I, I'll I, ask Dave I think to look it's, into it. Yeah, right Dave would know, so. Just wanted to ask about, about I've used the used the cell phone lot the other night, waiting to pick up my wife when she was coming back in from a trip, and and uh, it worked great. Great. It was it's uh, and what's nice is you actually have cell coverage out there, so mm -hmm. when she yeah, called me a, when she got in, it's a bonus. Yeah, that helped. Um, uh, I I had a call from one of the livery service guys yesterday, um, and I think he was mostly concerned about the construction of the new baggage area and all that, and he said there were so many local vans and hotel vans trying to get in there that was really stuffed up and he said is there any way to think about in the future just making that berm on the east side of that that drive area a little bit smaller maybe to accommodate another lane of cars it sounds like the number of hotel vans and shuttles and ubers and people like that increasing. are increasing and that that space may need to expand Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a very, very 40 foot wide berm in there that might be trimmed down by a lane's worth mm -hmm. of cars, perhaps. Yeah. If if that's a solution, but just thought I'd bring it up to put in the, in the pipe for sure. the next iteration. Yeah. But once the construction's gone, it may not be a problem. It may not be. We can certainly monitor it. Um, <laughs> you know, that's a nice thing. When we did the improvements to the parking lot, those were berms that we just removed, and it really made a difference. So um, where we can go in and do that, and maybe not compromise the the noise right in there, you know, it's, it's really protecting that North 40 from a lot of the noise in there. If we can still keep the berm. Right. The big berm's there. There. Just yeah. cut it back some. That'd be, that may be a solution. 
And those rodents that live in those farms. Yes. Um, I have a question about the airport. And I have talked with many people, and it was supposed to have happened, and I don't know if it has, to put an interior in the baggage pickup area, um, a RAFTA sign that shows you when you can meet the RAFTA bus at the airport so that people don't either miss it and then go or call somebody to pick me up, increasing traffic, or so people don't go out and stand in the cold and for half an hour if you miss the connection. Mm -hmm. And it was supposed to have been put up. I think it's a great idea. It was passed on to me, and I've talked to John Kenny about it. I talked with the ladies from ACRA who are out there, and they thought it was great. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what we need to do. I can follow up on that, Patty. I, I think know. the board supports it. So. Yeah, the bus, yeah. bus service signs in there. Yeah. yeah great idea. Yeah, and I'd, I'd understand do it that there were conversations going on regarding that so i can follow, can you follow up, up on that, that? yeah because i think, I think it, it makes great sense yeah if i you could know, if i could you go it. in any airport anywhere and if mm -hmm. you are going to be catching a train or a bus or a taxi or a shuttle bus or anything having really good signage and yeah. maps showing how to get there and then if we could have the added an electronic thing when when the next bus going towards aspen will be or going the other way all that all that would be very helpful for yeah. visitors. And I think you're going to see that in, in a lot of the recommendations that are going to be coming to you from the visioning committee. Um, in fact, I know on the task force I worked with on connectivity, one of the notions is to try to increase the multi-modal, multi-passenger type use instead of and getting away from the single passenger. And an idea along those lines is something that shows that real time, how long it takes to get into Aspen with public buses because mm -hmm. they get to use the lane versus the distance or the time it takes to get in on a on your own individual car and uh, would I, maybe encourage people to go wow you know, i think the main thing is just allowing people to catch it yeah because yeah. i've gone out there and frozen to the, or i've rushed out there as it's passing, passing and i would have stayed inside or i would have hurried up knowing it was sure. coming you know so sure. i think that is really beneficial because then it rather than taking you an hour to get into aspen riding the bus because you missed it yeah. it might be more efficient for people yeah I do know that they're doing a combination. I know that they're working on the signage, but I think there was something about even getting people the website on their phone so that they could look it up also because Rafta does a really nice job. You can yeah. look on your phone and know exactly where they're. The I just think are having it up. right in your face when you're coming but in your face the terminal. Is a, yeah, I think way. I think they should include the, the how long it's going to take you to walk out to that bus stop too because it's yeah because when you go across distance. the highway it's a little longer especially when it's yeah. slick so it takes a little and especially so when you're hauling out. a lot of luggage and it's a hill. <laughs> now, um, if I could, the other thing that I, uh, I've heard is in place, and I haven't gone out to check, but uh, when you're at the airport, if you call up the, uh, the web page there, the first thing you get now is the good traveler. I think that has been in, started up. I think the, the carbon offset, yes. voluntary carbon offset program is, is up and running, but I haven't experienced that. Do you, have you seen it? Yes, I know that uh, Pat was working on that um, with the airport staff, and it's my understanding it's up. Okay. Uh, there's that opportunity now. So tr any traveler who goes on the website is going to get a page that tells them about that. Yes. And I just realized I have to do mine both ways. That's right. I only did it one way, so now I'm going to do it coming back because it's really easy to do. And I think we're working on the electronic sign, having some um, nonprofit public space provided for us for the big electronic advertising signs to um, – do a flash message on there, which I think will really go, oh, I can go here and do that so people know what they're looking for. Good traveler means that you're nice to people and you offer them your seat. Rather, I think this Urban will really outside. explain it. Yeah. Okay. Great. So do any um, board members have uh, other open discussion items? I, I think have, we're good till tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I have, I have two of them oh. that I want to bring up. One, we all received a letter from Deborah Russell from Redstone, and she was complaining about the mill levy that they're... We have their increased your tax property taxes. Com and she was comparing it to to the one in Aspen, and Aspen was like 35 mil, and Redstone was like 97 mil or something. Um, I'm certain the difference is bec largely because of the Roaring Fork School District charges um maybe the the new raft attack i think what we should probably do one of us or is to refer her to the county assessor's office well, i was thinking maybe the that's what i was thinking maybe the assessor's office should be the one to 
contact her and just explain why their mill levy is what it right. is. Right, well, and I also think she needs to realize, and somebody needs to help inform her, the county does not just raise your property taxes. It was done by a vote of the people. And so the issue is with how people in her taxation district, um, where she's taxed because of the special districts, what they did to increase the mill levy it wasn't picking county just increasing her from 35% to 97%. It was based on the voters and that's just part of voter awareness and if you have issues with those and you should go out and campaign against raising the RAFTA tax or the school district tax or whatever and I think it's just a misunderstanding and maybe that's something the assessor's office could pass on to just educate her that is reading the letter it made it feel like she was accusing us of just raising her property yeah, taxes. Yeah, it was very You don't have the power to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's up to the voters. I think the assessor was copied on that letter. They were they? Were they? Were. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we just yeah. need to follow up and make sure they respond. Give them direction that, yeah. to I'll be the one. Could you do that? Steve, thank you for bringing that up. I didn't, I had that on my list. And um, the other thing I just wanted for an FYI, um, there's been an issue with the food bank of the Rockies delivery to Aspen had to be canceled two different times because they were using the Forest Service parking lot and the truck couldn't get in there because of snow issues. Uh, so Nan Sundin is working on that. She was meeting today with the representatives from the food bank of the Rockies to talk about the uh, you know, maybe coming up with a different location or a, some different system to to get the food delivered to the people. And I had I had a friend who actually volunteers uh, and gets food herself from the food bank, and she invited me to go down and just watch their operation down by the Roaring Fork Apartments there next to the Stubbies building. And so once a month they are there and. Um, in the parking lot basically at, by the Roaring Fork Apartments and it was fascinating seeing all the people that came and the, how their whole operation they get all these tables set out with all these boxes with food in it and it all gets distributed to people from quite a large area come to pick up food there. It was, uh, I was amazed at the operation I had no idea that that kind of thing was going on. Is that the new location? Is it there? Well, using that's it? that that's their basalt location. And then they have a location at the Eagle County building in Elgebel. And they do each one like once a month. They'll be at the different locations just for a couple of hours and then the food's all distributed. And and so there the location in Aspen was a problem and so I I mean I tossed out several ideas to Nan that uh, places with bigger parking lots where they m might be able to accommodate it besides at the Forest Service. Well, the Forest Service is nice because it's hardly utilized, except maybe church on Sundays, but um, they need to realize the snow will melt and then they won't have the problem. Yeah. So rather than search for another place and expend all that energy and time, um, you so, know, I don't know how so often it occurs that they can't get the truck in. And I was just stopped by there the other day and um, pulled out because I needed to get on the phone and want to get off the highway and um, there is quite a bit of snow there right now but it too shall melt. Yeah so anyhow Nan, Nan's working on it um, I think sometime maybe, maybe she can give us a report on during her quarterly report or something okay. let us know what what the outcome of their discussions are. Okay. So any other uh, open discussion? So we are adjourned for the day and we will see you for tomorrow morning. Breakfast starts at eight o'clock and we're gonna start meeting Patty, at did you pick me up? Eight thirty? Can I pick you up? Yeah. Is it eight thirty Oh yeah. Going, I'm not driving there to get Yeah, sure. <laughs> Just call me in the morning reminder. Eight or eight thirty. Eight thirty start, eight o'clock breakfast. Have a car. My car's at DIA. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Grassroots. Appreciate so you, it. You being I'll here. I'll drop Aloysius off. And uh, you don't need to be. Christ.